My name is Erica Ramirez, and I will be conducting today's lecture on the ANSOF matrix. Hi, we are the MIAC Stem, and I am Megan Munoz. I'm Jessica Scott, and I'm Erica Ramirez. Now meet the man of the hour, Eager Ansoff, the inventor of the Ansoff matrix himself. Ansoff was primarily a mathematician with an expert insight into business management. It is believed that the concept of strategic management is widely attributed to the great man. What is the Ansoff matrix? Eager Ansoff's product, Market Grid, portrays alternative corporate growth strategies. He presented a matrix that focused on the firm's present and potential products and markets, which are the customers, by considering ways to grow the existing products and new products, and in existing markets and new markets. There are four possible product market combination strategies. Market penetration, product development, market development, and diversification. And here we have the Ansoff Market Grid. To brainstorm how to grow beyond the niche that got you started, consider the Ansoff Matrix. It was first published in the Harvard Business Review in 1957, but remains a helpful framework for business owners today. Sometimes called the Product Market Expansion Grid, the Ansoft Matrix shows four ways that businesses can grow, and it can help you think through the risks associated with each option. A square is divided into four quadrants, representing your four growth choices, which include selling ex existing products to existing customers, new products to existing customers, ex existing products to new markets, and new products to new markets. Market penetration. The firm seeks to achieve growth with existing products in its current market segments, aiming to increase its market share. Its main objectives are to maintain or grow the market share of the current product range, become the dominant player in the growth markets, drive out competitors, and increase the usage of a company's products by its current customers. One common market penetration strategy is to make price adjustments. By lowering prices, the business hopes to generate more sales volume by increasing the number of units purchased and to make prices more appealing to customers when compared to the competition. Companies may also pursue a strategy of higher prices in hopes that higher revenues per, per unit sold translate into higher sales volume and a resulting increase in market penetration. With this strategy, a concern is that higher prices could deter customers from making a purchase. Companies may choose to increase market penetration to the greater promotional efforts. They may launch an advertising campaign to generate greater brand awareness or implement a short-term promotion with a finite ending date. A promotion is often linked with pricing, such as advertising a special sale price for a limited period. A competitor may counter a successful promotion with one of its own in an attempt to regain lost market share. The last market penetration example is product improvements, which can be used to create new interest in a stagnating product or to offer an extra benefit when using it. Consumer products manufacturers have often used a new and improved claim to entice customers to give a product another chance or to improve the perception of quality. Companies can also change a product's packaging to give it a more modern design that might appeal to the younger customer base. Market development. The firm seeks growth by targeting its existing products to new market segments. Market development options include the pursuit of additional market segments or geographical regions. The development of new markets for the product may be a good strategy if the firm's core competencies are related more to the specific product than to its experience with a specific market segment. Because the firm is expanding into a new market, a market development strategy typically has more risk than a market penetration strategy. Expanding geographically. When you're thinking about expanding, first think about where you want to cultivate new business. You have options, maybe other regions, 
nationally or internationally. Geographical expansion works well for a company that wants to expand its service territory because it needs a physical location to serve its customers. Clearly, clearly your ability to expand is subject to your ability to finance such as expansion. Many of the big boys of business include Walmart, Home Depot, and McDonald's have exported, have exported their operations to other countries. On a smaller scale, many microbreweries have opened up new locations in various metro areas and airports in the United States as a way to expand their geographical reach. Reaching into new market segments. You can also grow by reaching a completely new set of customers or market segments. This area is such a popular growth strategy because you leverage the products and services you already have developed. Product development. The firm develops new products targeted to its existing market segments. A product development strategy may be appropriate if the firm's strengths are related to a specific customers rather than to a specific product itself. In this situation, it can leverage its strengths by developing a new product targeted to its existing customers. Similar to the case of new market development, new product development carries more risk than simply attempting to increase market share. A classic strategy for product development is simply focusing on customer needs. Necessity is the mother of invention, they say, and this is certainly true when it comes to new product development strategy. Having a problem and coming up with a solution to solve that problem has generated a wide range of new product ideas from the wheel to the Twitter applications that pop up virtually every day. Spot a need and take steps to fill it. Brand extension is a common strategy for new product development. Brand extension simply involves using a commonly known brand name to introduce another similar but different product. For instance, Arm & Hammer Baking Soda extended its brand to toothpaste. Sometimes extensions work well. Other times, the extensions are too different from the original brand to appeal to consumers. Dove Soap, for instance, developed a shampoo that failed to resonate with consumers. Companies can strategically identify opportunities to capitalize on technology to provide products and services more conveniently less expensively, and in new ways, can stay ahead of the curve and avoid the unfortunate situation of having their products and services become obsolete. A good example of this in recent years, in the evolution of videotapes and then DVDs that could be rented at stores to the mailing of DVDs to consumers in their homes to move toward online rentals. While businesses can be negatively impacted by disruptive innovation if they fail to change with the changing environment, alert businesses can create strategic new product offerings to capitalize on technology. And last but not least, we have diversification. The firm grows by diversifying into new businesses by developing new products for new markets. Diversification is the most risky of the four growth strategies since it requires both product and market development and may be outside of the core competencies of the firm. In fact, this quadrant of the matrix has been referred to by some as a suicide cell. However, diversification may be a reasonable choice if the high risk is compensated by the chance of a high rate of return. Other advantages of diversification include the potential to gain a foothold in an attractive industry and the reduction of overall business portfolio risk. McDonald's starting of Mac Cafe is an excellent example of diversification. By starting Mac Cafe, McDonald's is offering new products that were not available in traditional McDonald's stores. Mac Cafe specializes in serving cafes, which attracts customers that usually don't come to McDonald's to eat fast food. Mac Cafe is not only a product development, but Mac Cafe has its own section of the store and clearly distinguishes itself from the traditional McDonald's store. The store has modern yet relaxing mood. This is important to attract new market segments, probably customers that go to cafes not to satisfy hunger, but possibly to take a sip of coffee and chat in a relaxing environment. Thus, McDonald's ca Mac Cafe serves, serves as an example performing diversification by, develop by developing both new products and new markets. Diversification can be done in four ways. 
Horizontal diversification occurs when a company acquires or develops new products that could appeal to its current customer groups, even though those new products may be technologically unrelated to the existing product lines. In vertical diversification, the company moves into the business of its suppliers or into the businesses of its customers. Concentric diversification results in new product lines or services that have technological and or marketing synergies with existing product lines, even though the products may appeal to a new customer group. And lastly, conglomerate diversification occurs when there is neither technological nor marketing synergy, and this requires reaching new customer groups, sometimes used by large companies seeking ways to balance a cynical portfolio with a non-cynical one.